beach fishing basics that I practice. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. Welcome to this new video. I've come down for a fish down at the beach and I'm just like you, I'm sure. I have lots of responsibilities. I'm married, my wife and I have two businesses. We have all sorts of stuff going on and so sometimes finding time to go fishing is not that easy. And this week I've got a busy week. So when I looked at my calendar this week, tonight was the night to go for a fish. So I've actually come down, I'm just gonna have a one hour session. And I'm gonna teach you in this video just basic things that I do and what my thinking is. Why I've chosen this spot, the method I'm using now, and I fully expect to catch some fish for dinner. So first of all, I've actually already got my lines ready. I made some rigs at home, just to save time when I got down here, obviously. I made some simple rigs so that when I got down here, I only needed to tie one knot, which is really good if you want to kind of minimize time. So I've got two rods. I'm going to chuck one out and leave it there and hold one. And I actually, I don't have any beach worms, although typically, as I usually do, I'll probably have a look and see if there's any worms there. And if I can catch some, I will. <laughs> but I just brought down some pilchards and I've got a little bit of squid. So I'm gonna start fishing with pilchards. And I'm also just going to use a half pilchard because I wanna use a, a bait that will fly through the air easily and I can cast a long way if I want to. So I'm gonna rig up one of these first then we'll just walk down to the water's edge and I'll explain the terrain to you uh, and what my thoughts are. So on this rod, this is just my light beach rod. You've probably seen it in other videos. And I'm using the world's deadliest rig. I'm using a stinger rig, two hooks. I've got one which is floating on the line, which, sorry, one which is just running loose. That's my stinger. I mean, I call it a stinger because it really does sting the fish. And um, although tra traditionally in old times, they used to call it a keeper hook. So I've already prepped a couple of pilchards here. I'm just going to come over here, down to my little cutting board. I'm just going to pick one of these babies up. Now this is actually probably, they're not, they're not huge pilchards, so this is about three quarters of a pilchard. I've trimmed the tail and I've cut it on a slight angle. So all I'm going to do is just down from the tail, I'm going to put this hook all the way through like so and then pin it through the middle part of the flesh and hold it against the side pull up that little bit of slack line I just got to lift this up so I can get the, the stinger and then so I've got my stinger hook here which I'm going to pin through the tail part I'll put it in there and just hide it in there and then I'm going to do that half hitch, which is just a loop that you double over and pull that half hitch tight, which will hold that all neatly together. And in this instance, I've got a barb from the stinger coming out that side. Actually, both barbs are coming out that side. The other barb's just hidden in the flesh there. So this will be the rod that I hold on to. I'm only using one bait, one single hook. I'm just going to whack that there. Then this, much, this one's pretty much rigged up the same, exactly the same thing. So my first two initial baits are identical. So you see I'm doing the same thing. I'll put that through, going to hook him through like so. Going to reach down and get my stinger. This sting is just a little bit big. I, I need to buy some more smaller hooks. I've run out. So this sting is just slightly larger, but that's okay. That'll work well. Then I'm going to do that loop over the tail. Now I'm going to chuck this one. I'm going to chuck this one out first, and then I'm going to come back and hold that one. But if we just go for a little walk down here. Now, when you have limited time to go fishing, you don't always get a choice of the tide or whatever so um, it was high tide at 4.30 and it's now 7 o'clock so it's two and a half hours out although today there was almost no difference between the high tide and the low tide 
Low tide was 0.7 of a metre and high tide was one metre. So that's almost, that's pretty rare when you've got a high tide and a low tide almost the same. So it doesn't really make much difference. Now, where I'm fishing here on the beach, there's a few waves out the back, but there's a sandbar out the back here that runs right along. And directly in front of the sandbar here, there's a, you, you can probably see it quite easily, there's a channel that runs parallel to the beach. It actually runs a fair way along and it looks like it's pretty deep. That to me looks like it'd be at least two to three meters deep. And then you've got this shallow sandbar with the waves crashing on it. I've chosen this spot here because down the beach a bit, this channel actually turns around and starts heading out to sea. Just a little bit south of where I am, the channel actually it goes, there's a gap between the waves where the deep water goes out. So if I was to fish down there, there would be a lot of current. But I doubt that there'll be hardly, there'll be probably be hardly any current here because I'm in the middle of this trough, which is great. You know, so I won't have my bait moving around. So that's why I've picked this particular spot right in the middle of this channel. And um, there's certainly enough, enough depth of water for, you know, just pretty much any fish could get in there. Even sharks would be able to get in there. So looks pretty good. So I'm going to chuck this one out first and then I'll come back and grab the other rod. I'll probably, I'll probably aim to get pretty close to that sandbar out the back. Just because that's where all the turbulence is. And uh, just waiting for this wave to gush up here. And I'm going to walk down a little bit. And then I'm going to pelt this guy out. Okay, so, all right, I, I landed. I landed right just inside the edge of that sandbar, which is pretty good. It doesn't look like there's much weed around. So I'll be hoping that the fish just hook themselves on this rod. Now we'll go and get the other one. So I'm going to hold on to this one and keep my eye on that one. It's great to be down here. I just love looking at the ocean. I'm just going to wind up a little bit of slack on that line. There is, um, there's a north, northeast wind blowing. Not too strong, not enough to put you off. I want to get this out there and get away before this wave hits. Okay. Well, that'll do. <laughs> the water's not cold. I'm just going to walk that way a little bit because my, my line's on a little bit of an angle going that way. I'd rather be a little bit more straight and level with the line, especially with the wind blowing this way. So I'm just going to come down this way a little bit. So the water here looks really good. And at the moment I only have that one bait, just the pilchard out there. So I'm going to have a fish and just see what happens. And then I may have a very quick look to see if there's any beach worms here. With a soft bait like the pilchard, I really think and things need to go my way. I could see that rod getting a bite. It was just getting, you know, like a bang, 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 bang. It didn't really buckle over. where patience is a good thing to learn. Now it's not really the right tide for beach worming, 
but I'm going to have a little look because, you know, quite often there's some worms here. So I've just grabbed a few pilchards. Just have a wander over here. Looks a little bit flatter just there. It's quite a steep edge. Okay, I'm just watching those rods. I want to try and see if there's any worms higher up the beach because with this kind of shore dump it'll be hard to catch them down there. Yeah, there's actually a couple of beach worms here, but I need a break in the waves. Oh, here comes a one. <laughs> a little bit wet. Got to keep my eye on those rods. Man, I was try I tried to get that other worm, and really, I didn't have time to get it. There's a little one here, starting to get a little bit dark. I've got to watch the waves. Like he's big enough to use for bait. Here's another wave coming now. I really just need a small gap in between the waves. If I can get one. Maybe I can get one now. I just need him to grab it. Oh, I had the worm. Oh well, there you go, I do miss the odd one. I'll try again. Go away, waves. Go away. If I can get a couple of worms, it might just vary my baits a little bit. Come on, bite the pilchard. There you go. That's not a bad sized little worm. So I'm actually going to trade up already. I'm just going to use this one worm and throw it on one of those lines. So it's not, the tide is only two and a half hours out, but as I mentioned earlier, there's not a huge difference between the high and the low, so that's why I can probably access a few worms. So I'll just put him there, put that guy there. Very strange. My rods, my line's gone off in one direction. I threw this line straight out, but it's it's way over there. So I think it's probably got something on it. Ah, oh, it's a weed fish. <laughs> so even though I'm not, even though I'm not rigged up with a long shank hook, I'm going to um take this pilly bait off and bait up with worm anyway on this hook when I'd normally use a long shank but you can improvise when you're fishing that's for sure so I've just coated this worm in some sand make it easier to put on the hook I'm just going to expose his head look you can see the worm's fangs I don't know if you can he doesn't you can see his head is here I'm going to, um, yeah, that's it, that's where he's, um, see those black fangs just come out, look at that, near the barb of the hook, it's got these black fangs in there. Oh, I can't see, okay. Alright, so I've got him on the hook, you can see that. 
It's a slightly thicker hook. This is this is a um, suicide style hook, but you can see I can still get the worm on it. Let's see if I can pull him up over the eye of the hook, but it's a bit thick. So what I'm going to do is just leave that worm there and leave a bit of a tag. And I'm actually going to put the worm separately on this little hook. So I'm going to put a separate worm bait. So in effect, I'm really, I'm going to have two worm baits. I'm going to have one. It's a bit wriggly and fiddly. So just threading this little bit of worm on there. Because it's running free on the line, I can't really run the, the worm up the hook at all. So I'm just going to break that off like that as well. And basically, I've got... I've got two worm baits with that stinger sort of set up. That should be attractive to a fish. We'll see if that makes much of a difference. The pilchards have been a little bit quiet. I did have a couple of bites, but I expect that, you know, our typical salmon should be patrolling up and down this gutter. So we'll see how we go. Okay, here we go. Just a little flick. Now, I'm actually going to catch two or three more worms. Because with this type of bait, they, they generally hook themselves the fish. So I can leave this in the rod holder. And we'll let the fish hook themselves. Oh, hang on. What's going on there? Man, that, that just goes to show. I was fishing down here in another video. It's taking line. I was fishing in another video with pilchards and worms and I caught all the fish on the pilchards. But this is that worm that I just caught. just did a big aerial. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> Man, he's just taking off down. He's just heading south. <laughs> oh, man. Because this is the lighter line, I can't really push him too hard. He's a good fighter. Now I want to get this guy in as quick as I can because I told my wife I'd be home at a certain time and I don't really want to stay down here for too long. Man, he's got a lot of guts, this guy. But he's getting close to the shore now. Oh, whoa, that was a big jump. Try and get him to come in with this wave. Whoa! Man, this guy is very active. Where is he? Come here. I might have to go in for a swim. <laughs> no, not really. He doesn't want to come in. Maybe I can get him with this wave. Hopefully. 
Yeah, look, he's surfing. Yay! Oh, what a cracker. What a cracker. Now, you know what? Like, he's a, he's a fat, he's a big fat fish. Look what's caught him. Look at the hook that's got him. Look. It's that little baby. Now, I want to get this guy in because I want to chuck out again. Whew. He fought so hard and really a challenge on these these light rods. Whew. How much longer have I got? Not much, enough time to catch another fish. I'm on a mission. I like to keep my word when I give people my word. So if I say I'm going to be somewhere at a certain time, I like to stick to it. He's another really nice fat fish. Really beautiful. So, um, that's motivated me to catch a couple more worms. And it actually does show you, if you learn the skill of beach worming, what a, gra what a valuable asset it is. And honestly, it really, I mean, it, it is hard, but it's not hard if you have a good teacher. Normally when I give people lessons, I get them catching worms in one lesson. And then they've got it for the rest of their life, which is pretty cool. So if you've been trying to catch beach worms, don't give up. It's really worth, once you've got it, you've got it. Once you get over that hump of catching the first couple of worms, you're good after that. So one minute you've got plenty of water, the next minute you've got no water. It's almost dark. The light's so dim, but you only need a couple of worms to catch a fish, so there you go. You've got to adapt. I'm going to put this guy up here. X marks the spot. Oh, this one's got a fish. So this is that last tail bit of worm from that first worm that I caught. Right, looks like we're heading down this way again. Not as big as the last one. Look at that. Actually, that's a tailor. Good sized tailor. Would you believe it? the tailor is caught on the little baby stinger hook again? Oh. I don't know if you can see just there the hook in his mouth. That's that little tiny hook. Actually, where's the big hook? The, the big hook was run, hanging loose. It's got caught in the side of his head, but the little hook has got him in the edge of the mouth. So that's a good size tailor for eating. Just hold him tight. He's quite thick. I'm gonna have a look at him. He's quite thick through there. Look at that. He's not a, a massive tailor, but just, I guess you'd call him a greenback. Now, I've gotta just, whoa. <laughs> I'm mindful that there are sharp hooks flailing around. You know, about 10 minutes ago, there was something big out in the waves. Not that far from the shore, about as big as me. So I think it was a shark. All right, no bait left on this one. I'm gonna put that last worm on. Worm on. See, I've got the worm here, I'll just um, crumb him again. It's not a huge worm, so he's not very thick, so it's not going to handle going on this fat hook all that well, but 
it will still fit on the hook enough if I'm careful to thread it on it will still fit on the hook enough to um, do the job on this suicide hook and I'll leave a little bit of a tag hanging and then I'll do the same thing I'll bait up the stinger hook with worm as well and this will indeed be my last cast but I've actually got two nice eating fish which is pretty awesome now I'm going to just toss this out and there's something I want to tell you so I'll come back <laughs> so my other line my other line is in because I just caught that tailor and I'm not going to chuck it back out again because it's almost knockoff time but I mentioned at the beginning about I said beach fishing basics that I actually do so I just want to do a few of those in point form so I had a look at a couple of beaches today I had to go into town for work so I want to be productive with my time so while I was in there I drove past the beach had a look and saw how big the surf was had a look at a beach in town and it had an okay spot to fish I checked the tide um, and though even though it wasn't it was pretty much of a nothing tide really me coming fishing was based on having an hour to spare to go fishing and also wanting to put up some more good information for you guys who watch these videos so I did my little bit of research I kept things pretty simple I did bring two fishing rods with me because you know it's not hard to have two rods it makes it a bit more exciting when you're getting more bites I came down with the pilchards I had a couple of bites on pilchard then I had a look to see if there was any worms I chose this spot because of the structure on the beach I chose the middle of the gutter because there would be less movement in the water and there was a nice depth of water with the sandbar out the back these are just things that I do every time I go fishing I always look at the conditions I look at the tide I look at a couple of beaches pick somewhere that's got reasonable looking water and then because I didn't have a lot of time tonight I just kept it pretty basic so while this line is out and hopefully a fish hooks itself I'm actually going to pack up my gear so that I'm ready to go my goal in this session was actually to just catch some fish for dinner because I only had a short window actually I've actually only been fishing for less than an hour maybe maybe 45 50 minutes I've got quite a large salmon and a good sized tailor had a couple of other bites so I've totally achieved my goal had lots of fun and I'll be home on time before dark so if this content is helping you with your fishing make sure that you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because it really does help my channel um, and enables me to get out here and devote time to making more fishing teaching videos for you guys so I look forward to seeing you very soon as soon as I can I keep my eye on the weather and I'll be back down here for another session so I'll see you in the next video